Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Discover at Home. My name is Annie McDonald. I'm naturalist and volunteer coordinator at North Lakeland Discovery Center up in beautiful Manitowish Waters, Wisconsin. And before we get into the meat of our episode today, I want to make a shameless plug for our upcoming special event. It's our 16th annual Northwoods Birds and Wildlife Festival. And unfortunately, due to the public health concerns this year, we're not hosting an in-person live event like we have the last 15 years, but instead we're bringing you content from uh, local bird and wildlife experts, natural resources experts, and they will all be delivered online. So kind of a virtual festival. There's still time to register for the event and you can find that information at our website or in the link uh, in the information above. We've got topics from the fisheries of, of uh, Lake Superior to the forest ecology of our region to the phenomenon of the migration of birds. Some of the presenters include uh, our local naturalist and, and author, John Bates, as well as the retired naturalist from Horicon Marsh, Mr. Bill Volker. You may have heard him uh, recently on Wisconsin Public Radio, as well as uh, a local silviculturist and forest ecologist, uh, Colleen Matula, with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. So like I said, we still have a lot of really great options, a lot of experts uh, that you'll be able to listen to for over 10 days that content will be available, and you can still register for that event at the link provided in the information above. That's enough of my shameless plug. Uh, today I want to talk to you guys about one of my favorite birds, and I think a lot of you guys probably feel the same way. Um, they're pugnacious, they're charismatic, they're really hard not to personify or anthropomorphize because they're just so much fun to watch. We're going to talk about the ruby-throated hummingbird. So our hummingbirds often return to the Northwoods region right around May, uh, mid-May or Mother's Day weekend. I don't recommend telling your mom that that's your present to her for Mother's Day, is that the hummingbirds return. Uh, she won't find it as funny as you think she will. But these little flyers are just amazing in terms of their migratory ability flying nonstop over the Gulf of Mexico. So these magnificent little flyers weigh only three to five grams, about a stick of gum, which is pretty amazing. The ruby-throated hummingbird has the largest breeding range of any of the North American hummingbirds, and their breeding territory spans all the way from southern Canada of Saskatchewan over to Maine and Minnesota, all the way down to Louisiana, and of course includes Wisconsin. Our hummingbirds have a ton of really neat physical and behavioral adaptations from their unusual flight and wing anatomy to their courtship displays and their nesting techniques. And I'm not going to get into all of that today, but one of my favorite hummingbird adaptations is their tongue. At twice the length of their long beak, their tongue is a nectar trap. The tongue is such a unique and interesting physiology that scientists only recently discovered its details. And the tongue is forked, and each segment of the tongue has a supporting rod, which is connected to flaps that unfurl to actually trap the nectar. So our hummingbirds are really attracted predominantly to red and orange flowers. Um, they have excellent color vision. Um, but they will also feed on the nectar from other colored flowers as well. But particularly our orange and our red flowers seem to attract them the most. Here's some of our columbine, a wild, a wild flower naturally growing here in the north woods that often attracts our hummingbirds. Well, most folks are aware that hummingbirds feed primarily on nectar and you know, we can provide that food source for them um, with just a simple homemade concoction. All you need really is a hummingbird feeder, water, and sugar. And it's a simple way um, to get to watch these territorial and kind of bellicose little flyers um, that provide us endless entertainment. So all you need, like I said, is a hummingbird feeder, sugar, and water. And the recipe is really simple. It's just four parts water to one part sugar. So no food dye is necessary. Um, even though I said that red and orange attract hummingbirds the most, oftentimes our hummingbird feeders have red or orange on them, and that is plenty to attract them to uh, your, your nectar source. Uh, food dye has been shown possibly to actually be cause ne negative effects, so we don't recommend adding it. All you need is just water and sugar, and table sugar does it best. So here I've got four cups of water. 
to one cup of sugar. Depending on how large your hummingbird feeder, you can adjust that recipe. But four parts water to one part sugar is all that you need. Make sure to mix it really well um, to dissolve that sugar into that water. And also just be cautious and be, um, you know, be aware that the longer that your, your quote unquote nectar sits out in the sun, in the, in the heat, it can ferment or it can mold. So before it turns cloudy, you want to take it in and clean your hummingbird feeder as well as just replace it with some fresh uh, nectar for them. Thank you guys for watching. Please share your hummingbird stories below and have a humdinger of a day.